So Boy has told a court that he didn't speak up before about his rugby coach sexually abusing him because he didn't know any grown-ups to trust with the information. His former coach, Alosio Taimo, is on trial at the High Court in Auckland and has denied 83 charges of sexual offending against 18 boys over nearly 30 years. The 13-year-old's on-camera police interview has been played to a closed courtroom today. Our court reporter, Edward Gay, was there and is beside me in the studio. Eddie, it's lovely to have you with us, as always. Although, by golly, you do tough work. Uh, the boy said uh, Alosio Taimo had won the trust of his parents? Yeah, that's right, and, and he said that the grown-ups had no idea what was going on. The courts heard how the 55-year-old Alosio Taimo was also a teacher's aide and was a trusted member of the community. The teenager told the police that the abuse started uh, when he was just 10 or 11 years old. He said that he and other boys called Mr Taimo Mr., uh, and the boys would go to a South Auckland home where he would let them play PlayStation and watch movies on his on his school laptop. Uh, the court's been told Mr Tomo would call the boys to his bedroom. Yeah, that's right, and he recalled the first time that this happened. He he recalled sort of looking back to his friends in the living room and the in the lounge room, and uh, he described them as looking shocked. Uh, once in the bedroom, Mr Tomo handed him a bottle of oil that he kept in his toiletry bag, asked him to massage his shoulder, but that... The touching soon became sexual. Uh, he said that on one occasion Mr Tymor showed him pornography on the school laptop. Another occasion he said Mr Tymor touched him in front of another boy. Uh, he said the abuse happened, as he put it, heaps and up to 30 times. The boy said Mr Tymor, who he uh, who uh, picked picked his victims and, and he picked the, vi the boys that he thought he could trust. Uh, on one occasion he woke up to find Mr Tymor touching him. He told him to get lost and uh, the, Mr Tymor apparently started crying and he said that I do everything for you and this is how you pay me back. Right, so frequency was being talked about, also location was being talked about, including Mr Tymor's car, is that right? Yeah, and the, the car in, in daylight uh, in in the school sports shed. Uh, the boys uh, the boys also got together and talked about the abuse. Uh, he said he also found naked pictures at one point on uh, Mr Tymor's phone. He said he deleted those and uh, went back to, to playing a game on the device. Right. Uh, how did all of this unravel? How's this all sort of ended up in court, Edward, Edward essentially? Yeah, well, the, the, the teenager said that one day he was, he was talking to his cousins and he asked them if they had been touched by uh, Mr Tymor. When they said no, he, um, he talked about his experience and his auntie, who was, she was doing the laundry in the next room, she overheard part of this conversation. She walked in and uh, asked, uh, asked the boy to tell her more about uh, what they were talking about. Uh, he he told he told her exactly what had happened, and uh, he said that she believed him. Um, that his, his auntie got angry uh, and um, told the other children to leave the room. He said that his his cousin uh, his cousin had also been in the care of Mr. Timor, and that his auntie then rang ran his cousin on the phone. Uh, and his cousin also confirmed that he had been touched inappropriately. At that point, uh, she she called the the boy a champion. She hugged him, uh, and she said this this abuse couldn't be hidden any longer. And uh, we know from from the Crown's mm. uh, opening on on Tuesday that she then she then called the police. That's how the investigation got going. We've yet to hear from defence, right? We are. We yeah. are yet to hear yeah. from. Her.